This is the most expensive, the most premium, the biggest iPhone currently in the market. Why should you choose this iPhone over the others? Well, I tested it out just to answer this question and I found some reasons, three to be precise. And today I'm here to tell you all about that. Repeating what I said, there are three reasons to get this iPhone over all the other iPhones that are currently available. And I'm saying this because there is a common theme that is there with everything about this phone. The display of the phone is very sharp, very, very bright, as bright as they come. The colors are natural, accurate, and beautiful. The size is the biggest of all the iPhones at 6.7 inches. But the displays on the iPhone 12 Pro, iPhone 12, iPhone 12 mini, they're all just as color accurate, just as bright as this phone's. The display is larger, but there is no extra utility of the bigger size beyond what all the other phones offer. It's just blown up in size. You can't split the screen to use two apps at the same time or use the Apple Pencil or smaller version of it or have multiple windows of the same or multiple apps. And there aren't enough software features to use the phone better with a single hand beyond reachability which was added way back with the iPhone 6 and it was never touched upon or refined in any way ever again. The iPhone 12 and 12 mini's display, while they are not as bright as this one, the 12 Pro's display is. And to be honest, unless and until you're using the phones all together, you won't really notice that much of a difference in the brightness. But Still, if you like to use your apps on a bigger screen or you consume a lot of media or play a lot of games, the bigger display will give a better experience. So if your use case requires any of these three factors, the bigger display will be the first reason for you to go for the 12 Pro Max. Behind the display, the phone's software and performance are top notch. Much like the display, literally. Uh, forget I said that. That's a very overused joke. Or the A14 which is the processor doing everything inside the phone it's very powerful and Apple's work with their chipsets is absolutely amazing the performance has always been far far ahead of the competition and the way the software is optimized with the hardware it works really well really fast and you get software updates for years but also much like the display everything here works just as well on all the other iPhones because they have the same processor the same software, the same features. And the only internal hardware difference that you will find is that the Pro models have a higher RAM of 6 GB, while the iPhone 12 and 12 mini both have 4 GB of RAM. And that difference is only visible in the software when you have a list of apps open at the same time, working at the same time. But otherwise, in normal usage, in regular day usage, you won't feel that much of a difference. And the display, everything inside the phone, they come encased in a very good looking design. The sides are flat and thick. The glass on the back is matte. The cameras on the back are huge, but look just right going by the size of this iPhone. And this is peak iPhone design. Flat sides and squared off edges were always beautiful and still are. And here again, although the design is exactly the same as the other iPhones with the flat sides and the flat back and the squared off edges, it's actually a step down with the 12 Pro Max. Here's why. The phone is too wide. While the flat sides look amazing, they make the phone feel thicker. So the already wide phone is also thick, resulting in the phone being hard to handle without a case and even harder with it. But the bigger size of the phone gives this phone its second advantage, and that is the battery. I use my phone very heavily during the day and this phone handles it very easy. I can start the day at 9 a.m. with a full battery and end it by 11 p.m. and the phone will still have around 20 to 30 percent left, if not more. And if it's used lightly or moderately, you can squeeze two days out of it easily. This you don't find on the other iPhone 12s. You can get just about a full day of use out of the 12 mini and a comfortable full day out of the 12 and the 12 Pro. So this is the second reason for you to get the 12 Pro Max over the other iPhones. And apart from the bigger design, what is also big is the camera array on the back of the phone. That results in this phone having a better camera than all the other iPhones. And that's because the bigger camera allows for better hardware behind it. Firstly, since the sensor behind the standard wide lens is so big, the amount of light entering the lens is so much more. That results in the phone performing really well 
in no matter what kind of lighting you're actually in. So while the shots, like the other iPhones, have great natural colors, the right amount of sharpness, and amazing dynamic range, the 12 Pro Max separates itself by not needing to use the night mode to correct the low light shots as often. The low light shots still have plenty of details without the night mode. But the low light shots can look great with the other iPhones due to the presence of night mode of course. But what the bigger sensor size enables here is that you can click pictures in low light where your subject does not stay still, like my dog here. If the same kind of picture was tried with the other iPhones with the night mode on, it wouldn't be possible because the night mode requires you and your subject to stay in the same exact position for at least two seconds for the phone to get the exposure right and the shot right. And with the night mode, the 12 Pro Max needs half the time of extended exposure to get the shot right compared to the other iPhones. Along with this, the telephoto lens on this phone provides a higher optical zoom of 2.5x. While the difference isn't much, it does give you better framing options. The ultrawide performs exactly the same as well as the other iPhones, so no advantages here. Same for the front camera. Now the other difference that we get to see in the 12 Pro Max's camera because of its huge size is the stabilization. The hardware behind the sensor of this camera enables what Apple calls sensor shift stabilization, which results in stabilization like such which results in videos like such. And if you ask me, it's pretty fucking impressive. And hence, if you want to record videos, click pictures, make content solely out of a phone and you do not want to buy an expensive camera along with its expensive lenses, this is the phone you should get. So this is the third reason for you to get the 12 Pro Max. So in conclusion, I am skeptical about being able to recommend this phone over all the other iPhones available. And that is not to say that this iPhone is just a blown out 12 Pro Max with a bigger size display. It has the things that it does better than all the other iPhones. All I'm saying is it needs to give you something better. It needs to be designed better. It needs to have better software features so as to make the bigger screen better than just the bigger screen. Apple has ventured into this product range where they want the biggest phone to offer something different than all the other iPhones. And I just want them to give you more than just three reasons to actually get the bigger phone. Till the time that happens, any of the other three iPhones in the iPhone 12 lineup are almost as good as the 12 Pro Max. And if you're in the market to get the latest iPhone, I would actually recommend any of those three over the 12 Pro Max. Unless and until you care deeply about the three advantages that this phone has over them. That covers it. Comment any other questions you have about this phone. I would love to answer everything. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. And if you know someone who is in a similar confusion, a similar situation about the 12 Pro Max, share this video with them. It'll help them. It'll help me. And you'll be the awesome person helping everyone. I'll talk to you real soon in the next one.